What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. I am finally uploading a lifting day video. It has been forever since I've done one of these. Honestly, I just hate recording in public gyms. Uh, when I work out, I like to do it by myself. I don't even like training with training partners unless it's somebody that's like super, super high level. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a, a loner when it comes to, to gym work. But yeah, starting off this video with my warm up, um, I always like to start with ISOs. A lot of you guys have been asking, what is that weird exercise when I'm kneeling down on the ground, holding a wall in front of me? It is basically a natural leg extension. I'm pushing my feet into the ground. It is an isometric. I have preached the benefits of isometrics over and over again, but I cannot overstate it enough. Even if you don't have any knee problems or any kind of injuries like that, they are really good to do. It's a good preventative exercise to strengthen uh, your tendons, right? Your patellar tendon. Um, I like to do uh, three to five sets of 45 seconds right before I lift. If you're not going to warm up at minimum, do those isometrics. They are a game changer. And for guys that uh, have knee pain that has just like recently popped up, they are really, really good and can get rid of your knee pain just by itself. If you've had knee pain for years, there is a lot more stuff that you would have to do, obviously. Um, but yeah, make sure you never skip your isometrics. And then in between sets of isos, I am doing jump dynamic flexibility. Purpose of that is just to get the body temp up, uh, decreases risk of injury. So yeah, really important to do a warm up. I used to do high intensity warm ups, so a lot of like skips and, and all that stuff. And I would also sprint every single workout, but I recently stopped doing it just because I noticed it was decreasing the quality of my lift. So that's why you don't see that listed here. Instead of that high intensity warm up, I started doing a barbell warm up. As you can see here, it's basically just going through some of the main lifts like front squats, back squats, uh, hang cleans, snatches, and that sort of thing. Just kind of to grease the groove and get in a good rhythm. Now, I'm going to use this time to kind of talk about the current training cycle that I'm doing. I am currently doing a max strength cycle. Um, it's actually closer to absolute strength. I believe max strength is in the three to five rep range, and then absolute strength works more in the one to three rep range. Uh, if you've seen my last lifting video, you know that I just got finished with an elastic cycle. Now, in that elastic cycle, my one foot bounce went up a lot. It went up three inches, I believe. Uh, but my two foot vertical dropped a ton. And this is something that has been repeatable for me. Um, I think every power cycle and elastic cycle that I've done in the past, my vertical has always kind of just stagnated a little bit. Um, with the exception of the first time that I ever did a power cycle back in 2019 when I had a low training age. Before 2019, my training was super basic, just three by five deadlift and squat whenever my knee could handle it. 2019 was when I started doing just full on jump training cycles, started working with John and basically training like an Olympic track athlete. Uh, and obviously, because of my training age being so young, I could have literally done anything and my vertical uh, would have gone up. But what me and John have noticed is that as I've gotten more elite in my vertical and my uh, lifting level has become more advanced, I've continued to respond to hypertrophy cycles and max strength cycles and jumping super well in them. But when I do power work and elastic work, my vertical drops off, uh, off two feet, which is really strange because traditionally what the jump training world has always preached is do max strength work, right? Build a good base, get your strength up, your force production up, and then you do power work. That way you can increase your rate of force development. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, rate of force development, um, rate is how quickly something is happening. Force is, uh, is in the word, is force production, how much force you can put into the ground, um, and which is basically power, right? Power, more power, the more power that you can generate, the higher you're going to jump. That's just how quickly you can generate force. Um, so you always hear um, anybody that knows what they're talking about in the jump training world Increase your RFD, you are going to jump higher. Uh, you see it a lot for guys that are stupid strong but don't jump high, increase RFD. Uh, what was happening is when I was doing those power cycles, my vertical was going down. Basically, and it's been repeatable. It's happened like three or four times now. 
which was just really confusing. And then I would go do some max strength work and my vertical would skyrocket like clockwork. Like I respond perfectly to it. During a max strength cycle, vertical drops off the first three weeks, I deload and I hit new levels. And that's what I did leading up to my 50.5 inch vertical. Um, so we're testing some new things out. We're gonna hammer some max strength work, see if I can get back to the 50.5 inch vertical range. We have some theories on why that is. And when we started looking at studies, we noticed there have been basically zero studies done on elite two foot jumpers. I'm talking guys that have 46 plus inch verticals. There's been a couple studies done on like volleyball players um, that weren't very elite, but there's literally never been a study on elite jumpers. So it's kind of just like cutting edge stuff that we're doing. Um, I'm basically the only guy at that vertical range that is treating themselves like a guinea pig and trying all these methods of training. Um, but comment down below why you think that is. Uh, me and John are probably going to cover our theory in a different video, but I'm curious to hear you guys' thought on why that is. Um, for younger athletes or guys with a younger training age, the power and elastic work does work. And there has been some athletes where elastic work does work for two foot jumpers. But yeah, comment below. Um, I'm curious to see what you guys uh, say on this. Now, as far as this specific workout, I did clean pulls, worked up to heavy singles at 110% of my power clean. Um, I did do high clean pulls. I had regular clean pulls program, but I did high clean pulls. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that's basically pulling it as high as you can with arm bend. Traditional clean pulls, there is no arm bend. The reason I like to do that is because I, I notice it gives me more intent. Now, intent is really, really important when you're lifting to jump higher. When you jump, it's with max intent. You should train with max intent on as many of your lifts as you can. This does increase the intensity and it is extremely fatiguing. So proceed with caution. Um, but that's why I like to do high clean pulls. Um, now, you, if you noticed, I did a set of the McGill curl up after the clean pulls. It's because my extensors were freaking lit up like they were so sore it wasn't back pain. Like usually back pain is you feel it in your like vertebrae and it's a lot more neural. This was just like the spinal extensors were just, they felt like they were swollen. So um, I did a set of the McGill curl up and then I proceeded with caution in my warm up sets for the back squat. My back felt good during them, um, but I was just being very careful. Now with all this super, super intense deadlifting and back squatting that I've been doing, it is a lot of load on my lower back. So I've just been trying to be as careful as possible. I've been minimizing how much bounce I have at the bottom because I notice my back flares up when I do bounce a lot. So I've just been trying to control the descent and then drive the weight up uh, with, a, with that controlled descent. I filmed from a side angle here because I wanted to see how much butt wink I was going into, uh, which I think is pretty minimal um, from what I saw. Here I am uh, doing 285, and this felt really good. We recently did a podcast uh, with Joe Ellis. He is a hammer thrower. He's about to compete with Great Britain, uh, hopefully qualify for the Olympics, um, this upcoming, these upcoming Olympics. And we were asking him how, about his training. And for those of you guys that don't know, the throw Olympic like throwers in the, in the field events, so hammer throw, shot put, discus, their training is super similar to how you would train um, as a two foot jumper. And one of the things that he does is he uses velocity based training to look at how much intent he's training with. And that inspired me. So this session, the focus was on training with max intent. Now, like a dumbass, I forgot to press record on my tripod that was recording horizontally. So this is the, the iPhone footage. I worked up to 370 uh, or this was 350. I didn't record my 370 set. And then here I put 380 pounds on the bar and I almost died. As you can see here, I dropped down a millimeter. I didn't have the safety bars set up. So literally like adrenaline hit me and through the strength of God, I was somehow able to, to survive that. You can see that my book bag was on the ground. If I would have dropped it, my phone would have died. My tripod would have died. I had everything in there. Uh, but luckily I survived that and I got the 380 up. Normally 380 is cakewalk, but I did a ton of volume and intensity, as you can see from all the sets that I did here. Finished the workout with some single leg seated calf raise. 
Uh, those felt really good. That's really good if you have PFP, especially. Uh, that's a type of knee pain. Um, if you don't know what PFP is, you probably don't have it. And then finish the workout with hamstring curls. That is it for the video, guys. As always, if you want me to coach you to jump higher, go to thpstrength.com. The average athlete I coach gains four inches of vertical in six months. If you want to be a part of that exclusive team, go to thpstrength.com, watch the video, and apply to see if you're a good fit for our coaching. Other than that, guys, like the video. It helps my channel tremendously. Comment and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.